Hey, I'm Matt. Today I want to show you how to build this small tabletop workbench. You can build this for less than $20. All you need is two eight foot common pine tuba tins you can pick up at your local home store. This workbench is perfect for those in small shops or small spaces, apartments, or if you don't have a dedicated workspace, or for somebody like me who doesn't otherwise have vertical clamping capabilities on their assembly table, this adds that versatility to my shop in a small compact form factor that can easily be stored out of the way when not in use. So Mike Taylor from taytools.com came up with this design and sent it to me to make a video on. He used a tube of tin, one single tube of tin for the main portion. If you wanna make these I-beam style feet, you're gonna need an extra tube of tin. Check the description below, I'll put a link to build plans for this project. That way you got your cut list and exactly where you need to route those dovetail grooves. It has all of the work holding capabilities of a full blown workbench. It has a cam and a wedge that's specifically designed for this workbench. So you're able to clamp things tight to the bench and sand or plane things that are three quarters of an inch or thicker. And that way the, none of the clamps or anything is gonna get in your way if you're working with three quarter inch stock. It can be clamped to any number of things that you can think of, a tailgate of the truck, your existing assembly table, your deck railing, even my outdoor sectional that I built, I clamped it to that. Or if your spouse will allow you, you can clamp it to your dining table. Don't tell Miss 730 when I did this. And we're gonna build a couple of extra feet like these. It's gonna raise it up two and three quarters inch or these I-beam style feet that raise it up another eight inches to make it more ergonomic in certain situations. For all the clamping and dovetail hardware, we're using the micro jig match fit system for this workbench. It makes it extremely versatile. I've used it on the jointing sled that I built as well as on my crosscut sled that I built. I really like this system. It works extremely well. If you go to taytools.com, you can use the code 731 microjig 10 That'll save you 10% off of any micro jig product. This is an easy woodworking project that'll add a lot of versatility to your wood shop. I start by squaring up the end of the tube of tin. Actually, this is a two by eight because I don't know how to follow his instructions, but the plans will call for a tube of tin. I squared that up and then I made two equal cuts, a little over 34 inches for these two pieces. Put them on the workbench, then I realized I don't want to mess this up because I just built it. So I rolled out some paper to help protect from glue. I did plane down my pieces so that they would be flat on both sides. If you don't have a planer, never fear, you can still make this project. All you need to do is pick a good flat board. Once that's planed, or if you just got a good flat board, put a lot of glue on here. We're gonna laminate these two boards together to make a good thick workbench. Then we're just gonna clamp these together good and tight and let these dry for a couple of hours. You wanna to try to line up the edges as best as possible. We're gonna trim those up to square them up, but just try to get them close. Next, we're gonna cut the pieces necessary for the fence as well as the small riser feet. For the riser feet, you're gonna need two pieces exactly the same length, and then we're gonna stack those on top of each other and glue them just like we did the main workbench build. And I got glue on my shorts. Clamp those up, we're gonna let those dry a couple hours as well. Once everything's dry, we're just gonna rip the very edge off of each side of the glue up so that we got two good square clean sides. Then we're gonna cut the main portion of length, which is 34 inches, just a good square cut on each end. Here we're fixing to start routing our dovetail grooves for the workbench as well as those riser feet. It's easier, if, especially if you don't have a router table to go ahead and route these as one piece. We're gonna route a dovetail groove down the center on each side of our workbench, all four sides, and also on one side of those riser feet. We're also gonna be routing seven grooves across the grain down the length of the workbench on each side. We're using the match fit dovetail bit here. I wanna set it to 3 8 inch deep. I'm using my Craig setup block so that I can get this extremely accurate. Once that's done, I'm gonna route down the center of the board. We're gonna do that on all four sides, right down the center. Clean that up and then make it make sure that the clamps slide in there easily. Flip it over, we're just gonna go right down the center again while my edge guide is still set up. Make sure you wear a mask or something here. I've got an RZ mask on. These things are great for dust that gets thrown in your face. And for the top side, you're gonna route a groove on each side of the center so that you've got three to clamp to. And then right down the center on each edge. The 
If you haven't seen this, this is a edge guide for a framing square. It makes it to where you can just easily have a fence on the framing square. I use this as an edge guide so that I could get 90 degree cuts across the grain of the workbench. I actually use the workbench to help hold down the square so that the bench helps build the bench. Now just route a groove down the center of what will be the short riser legs. For these feet, the smaller feet of the two feet that we're building, if you've used a tube of tin, then your feet's gonna be exactly the same width as your tube of tin is after you cut it down. If you use a two by eight like me, then it's gonna be the width of your two by eight. For these short riser legs, you're gonna need a Forstner bit or something to drill a bigger hole so that you can then drill the smaller hole so that the match fit hardware actually reaches all the way through. Once that's done, you can just attach your hardware. Now it's time to cut the dados for the I-beam style feet. If you don't have a dado stack, you'll just have to take multiple passes with your table saw. I went ahead and installed the dado cartridge for the saw stop just in case something bad was to happen. Once I done my first pass, I actually moved the fence a little bit to the right, made another pass, then back to the left, made another pass until I got the fit just right. Then we'll cut these all to the length and start assembling them with glue and clamps. There's something satisfying about that glue squeeze out, isn't it? We'll let those dry for a little while. Now we're gonna work on our plane stops and you're just gonna need to rip a piece to length and then rip it down to one inch thick. Once you get them cut out, you're just gonna cut them the width of your workbench and then make sure you line up where you're gonna drill your holes for the match fit hardware to match the grooves of the end of your workbench. So the only hardwood you're gonna need is for the cam and the wedge. And I just use scraps from a cutting board build. You can use whatever hardwood you have at hand. You're gonna to need to set the saw at five degree angle to be able to rip this first. Then I brought it to the miter saw and cut that at a five degree angle off a square so that I would have a, a wedge shape versus a square shape. And that, you see this is a kind of a hairy cut. I took it extremely slow, made sure my hands were way out of the way. Then we just cut it to length. The length here doesn't matter, four or five inches is fine. So this is the cam we're using. It's really the only one like this out there that we could find. And so the website you have to buy it from is kind of hard to use. However, it works extremely well. It's gonna drill a hole through your cam and I install a quart rubber on the bottom of mine. You're gonna to need to route two grooves into your I-beam style feet. And what I did was down the center and then again across the center. Now we're gonna start working on our fence. I've already drilled one hole here before I realized I needed to put this cork on. This is some stick on cork from Tay Tools. Link in the description to all these supplies that you need to build this workbench. I'm gonna stick that on. I just trimmed it up to fit. Then I marked center for these holes so that I could drill them out. Use my spring loaded center punch to mark the position of the hole so the drill bit has a good starting point. And I'm just using the drill press and a Forstner bit. These holes need to be at least one inch. I used an inch and a quarter because that's the size Forstner bit I had but a one inch hole actually works better. That cork actually sticks in that bit, so you're gonna to need to clean that off between holes. So in the end of this vise jaw, you're gonna to need to put some type of groove in there. This is a quarter inch straight bit that I used. I would cut a groove and then lower the bit, cut a groove, lower the bit until I got all the way through. Then I just use my chamfer bit to chamfer the face of the hole. 
Hey, if you like projects like this, be sure and click that subscribe button below, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all the new content. To show you how easy this really is, this is like a traditional style work clamp here that we've got. But underneath, you see those dovetail grooves. This clamp's just gonna slide in there. And then all you have to do is clamp it to your existing workbench. Just snug is all it needs. It doesn't have to be extremely tight. But once that's there, like you're not gonna move this portable bench. It's there. It's extremely solid. Like this is a, an extremely well-designed product. And what's really amazing about this whole build is it's extremely f affordable. This is common pine. And this, the, the most expensive thing you're gonna buy are these clamps. And you know, their clamps are clamps. They're always expensive no matter who you're buying them from. But they're extremely versatile. It's extremely easy to set up. It's got that cork on there so you're not gonna damage your work. And it's just, it's extremely solid. Like that thing is in there. Like if I, I could move the clamps a little closer to get even more force on it, but I'm pulling y'all and this, I mean, it took a lot to move it. So if you're cutting your dovetails with the Cat's Bose's dovetail jig and his saw that he sells, then this is gonna keep that clamp vertically. If you need to work on the end of this, whether that be for sanding or whatever your reason for, this is perfect for that. Fully extended with your clamps all the way out. You're gonna get about four and a quarter inches of clamping capability with this uh, common woodworking style vise. And if you're just using the dovetail clamp itself to you clamp, you're gonna get about a five and a half, maybe a little more than five and a half. This was designed so that you could actually work on three quarter inch stock without having to worry about any of the clamping getting in the way. And so this is a plain stop. We've got our cam with this special cam lock. So the cam just runs in that dovetail track. You have this wedge that has a five degree angle on it. The cam has a five degree angle on it. What that does is lock everything in place. So you're just gonna run that up there, tighten your cam down, and then take your mallet drive your wedge in there. What that does is wedge it against your plane stop. Now this piece is held in place. You can sand this, you can plane this, you can work on it however you need to up here. And none of the work holding is getting in the way of the actual surface of this board. This workbench actually has three modes as I call them flat mode. Right here, as you see, it'll clamp flat to your surface of your assembly table, and give you all the clamping capabilities that it has. And then you can raise it up just a little bit if you want two and three quarters inch raised up. That gives a little more height. And then the I-beam style feet just screw into place. Then you can clamp those down to your workbench from underneath. You can take this with you to the job site and clamp it to saw horses. It'll also clamp vertically to any surface, just like it was horizontally. This actually only weighs 18 pounds by itself. If you put the small feet on, it's 21 pounds. If you put the I-beam feet on, it's less than 25 pounds. If you do clamp it to the tailgate of your truck, be extremely cautious because it will dent your tailgate if you put too much pressure on your clamp. So this is probably more in line with a utility style truck that has a utility style trailer bed. Everything's built with Southern Yellow Pine. You can buy it at your home store, except the cam and the wedge. These need to be hardwood because you're gonna be hitting those with a mallet and softwood will, it will not last. It'll break or it'll bend and all that. If you don't have any match fit system products, I would recommend picking up at least four of these clamps. That's what I have. Four seems to be the magic number. That way you got two you can clamp your bench to and you've got two to use for work holding. Yours may, may or may not look exactly like this one. Uh, Mike used a router bit to do this detail on the end of his, uh, maybe a large roundover bit. I didn't have something that large, so I just used my miter saw and cut an angle on the end of my plane stops these are functioning exactly the same. They're gonna do the exact same thing. They just look a little different. So if yours doesn't look exactly like this, perfectly okay. This is probably one of the coolest workbenches with this much versatility in this form factor that I've ever seen. And if you wanna build one for yourself, there's plans linked in the description below. Super simple project, only gonna take you a few hours to make it. So Mike actually did us a favor and put a bundle together for us on his website at taytools.com. I'll put a direct link to that webpage in the description below. But don't forget to use the code 731 microjig 10 to save you 10% on any microjig products you may pick up. Hey, thank you for watching. Click that box right there if you want to see a big ultimate workbench build. And if you want to see how I build my crosscut sled, click that box right there. Click in either one of those boxes, get you a big old virtual fist bump.